I want to say AMP platform, but AMP means Agile Media Processing Platform. So I can't. I would basically say platform twice. AMP is uh, Grass Valley's Agile Media Processing Platform. And it is a cloud solution that has a number of applications you can use. And we have implemented that today with a LifeFly. And I want to show you what we can do with this uh, application. So I'm quite excited about that. We are connected with the RecFusion Live to the cloud. And um, I'm going to show you what we can do. Yes, in a different video, it will be audio mixing. But in this one, it will be Minimixer, which is a small eight channel or four channel mixer for HD and 4K sources in the cloud. It's all hooked up with Skyway's Blue Pill platform. We have an AMP device core. This one, Minimixer, is set up with a platform URL, an API key, and also a workload. And the workload is an identification of the application that we have purchased from Grass Valley, I assume, and, and then which I, I want to talk to. So I could have multiple Minimixers, and if I would just give them a name that would be uniquely identifiable inside the system, or you can uh, provide a workload ID. If you know the AMP platform, you know workload ID is a UUID, which is a lot of numbers and letters and dashes. So there is a way to have a more um, um, masochistic approach to setting up the workload. We have chosen to also allow you to use the name. <laughs> and uh, we are quite happy about that. So it's connected. I am connected to the online instance. I have also set up the RecFusion Live with the out-of-the-box configuration, the AMP Minimixer here. It could have been an ATEM switcher or VMix. Today it's AMP. I also have a RecFusion Live which has joystick control. So let's say that you uh, want to put something on the camera selector, then you could discover devices on your network, like uh, the CIN500 we have here. So um, I don't know how that would work with the cloud platform, but now I'm connected to it, and I could pick it and add it, and I have it now here on the camera selector. I am moving a camera somewhere on my network, probably at my office. Um, I'm in my home office, and um, there's a company office, a different place in Copenhagen. Now, um, today, let's move over and, and take a look at how we can control the mini mixer. So <clears throat> here we see I'm basically able to select sources on preview. I can press the cut button. I can cut, 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 cut. I can also do auto transitions. I can turn a key on and off. On, off, on, off. I can also choose whether the key is turned on and off with the mix or cut transition. So that's basically a toggle I have right there. It could be a mix. We can't see any difference here. We also have flip-flop on and off. Flip-flop basically means that if I do a cut, the preview source won't uh, swap space with the uh, program. So it's just like select your preview, cut. Select your preview, cut, etc. But you flip-flop is probably what most of us are used to as the default way this uh, vision mixing works. There are some transition types. I can browse through them using this little knob. And I should probably scroll a bit to the side so you can see it. OK, so I'm just scrolling through these. And there is also different speeds I can choose. There can be cuts, which is probably no transition at all. Then we have slow, medium, and fast. And now I did a little thing that is uh, kind of funny, kinky, and so on. That is, if you hold down the shift key, you can do two things. You can adjust the speed of the transition speed that you have chosen, and you can also pick your transition. That's probably the most noticeable thing. It almost looks like letters, S, V, U, V, V, something like that. But anyway, you see the point. I made icons for the uh, Red Fusion Live because we can. These are graphical OLED displays with 64 by 32 OLED crisp monochrome pixels that will give you beautiful icons like those. Let's look at the speed adjustment, because as I'm turning this encoder knob, you see how the speed is changing. And I can also click it once to, down to have a like course adjustments. So I'm adjusting the, the transition time of the fast speed. So fast, medium, and slow is really what you define them to be using the speed function. So medium could, in fact, be, I guess, it could be faster than fast which is now slower than medium. But you can also press and hold, and you can reset it all. So let's just do that. And I'm kind of through with my demonstration. This is what the Minimix does. This is what the Fusion Live will do. You can pick other controllers as well. You could search up a, 
Uh, probably we don't have a LifeFly on our network, but let me just show it from our database. LifeFly looks like this, and uh, that kind of panel is essentially, I mean, if you compare these two in our simulation tool, you can see that a rack fusion live being a rack unit. And now you see how on, on this section, it's actually connected to my CIN 500. That's why it's showing up. But essentially, a LifeFly is half of a rack fusion live. And therefore, the same configuration would apply to a panel like this one. I just remove this one again because we are not going to use it. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about the configurations out of the box. But the cool thing is that you can also customize this. It is quite easy to just add your own stuff to it. And I want to show you that at this point in the video, because I think it's really easy. If you go to the configuration tab, you can customize quite a lot. First of all, you need to be aware of what you see down here. In many cases like this one, there is not a lot of choices, but there are still a choice between a menu section and a user section. And let's just start on the user section. The user section means that anything that you see kind of highlighted here is available to us as something we can change. Let's try to look at this button. So if I press this one, I can basically assign a uh, key estate action to it or um, behavior. And what does that mean? It means as I'm now pressing this button, and let's go and check out the Minimix, you see that I am actually enabling toggling the Kia on and off. Okay, so if I go back and change it to something else like transition, you see now it's basically the mixed transition. And if I go back here and uh, let, let's pick um, type of transition, what is this now? As I'm pressing it, you see it's actually cycling through the types just like the button over here did, the cut, um, the, the encoder knob. So it is so easy using these one-click behaviors to get whatever you want on those buttons. And what do I think? I mean, now I have kind of exhausted the options that I have. So it's, um, I don't know what would be meaningful to put down on this one from the Minimix at least. I mean, it could be something else. We could pick it from the CIN 500. We could actually pick exposure. And now we do exposure on the, on the UE um, or the CIN 500. Anyway, uh, we can also just clear the contents of this one. And then uh, we, are, we are back to, to normal again. But I told you that apart from the user section, which is like global over all of the LifeFly section of the Refusion Live, there's also the menu section. And the menu section is cool because it actually allows us to add pages of stuff that we want on these six buttons. So I want to create a new page and I don't want it to be a transparent page, but a opaque page. And I will call this program because what I am missing is the ability to cut straight to program. But creating this page allows me to now override what these six buttons do. So I'll just drag across and then go into my Minimix and close down these, select program input. And now they will all select source zero for program, which makes no sense. So we'll open the batch editor, type in one for the first, and then plus one for the remaining one. So now it's automatically increased the value of which source to select from one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. And we can now go to the Minimix and see what happens if I press button one, two, three, four, five, and six. I cut straight to program down here. I select preview and I can press cut to do the transition. And we can go on like this. Sorry, let's just go back here. We could create a new page and we could do something else. Beautiful, lovely and something nice. Just create a page that's named like that. And then, yeah, you have your third page. You can do exactly the same. So how do you change these? Well, I can do it here for sure. But can I also do it on the controller? Yes, you can. because like built into the configuration, we have decided that this key will be your menu cycling key. So notice what happens as I'm pressing the home key. Ah, that's actually not true. If you press it, you are resetting it. It's a little bit special because normally if you press the keys, then you would kind of um, cycle through the options. But um, yeah, you can you can see it on the controller as I'm pressing the sides, I'm basically going through the three pages that I now have. So on the left edge, I'm at home, I press right edge, I go to program, I can do my program switching, and I can go over here, we are now something else. If I press the lower edge, I'll always reset back to home. So that's kind of useful. On the uh, program page, I noticed that these keys are currently 
white. And I think red is the right color for this. So let's just do one final thing that could be an interesting modification, namely to basically change the color to red. So what I would do then is to show more. And now it gets slightly more advanced. And what you need to go for is the conditional feedback. Conditional means that the feedback, which would be a color. Let me just show you, because if I pick a color, then it will be absolutely clear to you. I just picked red. Now, let's enable that one. You see it's red. You see it's red on the controller in the web UI. And it is also red over here. All right. So it's good. Yes, we did the right thing. And this is conditional feedback because it's only red if the button is turned on. And it's only turned on if this particular source, number one, is on program. So that's what conditional means. Unfortunately, I will have to do this for each one of these buttons manually. But I think you'll survive that little exercise quite easily. It kind of opens up the same every time. So it's almost something you could automate if you had a clever tool to do that on your computer. But I am almost done while trying to keep myself busy talking to you guys. And we have this sorted out by customizing the colors. And on this last one, I'll just pick ice. I love that color. Now, let's just check if it works. You see the colors are in fact the colors that I chose, including ice as the last one. You can of course do all these things yourself if you own a Skahoy device. You need to buy our hardware with the powerful, powerful blue pill platform inside. This one talks straight to the cloud. It is speaking AMP language. And by that, the computer I'm recording this on and showing you the web GUI on is not necessary. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this was inspiring and see you in another one about the AMP.